Higher Learning Network. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Love Talk Radio. Love Talk Radio. Women have the power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all agree to do one thing. Share. Let's share our wisdom. Share our time share our talents, share our finances, but most of all, let's share our love. This is The Female Solution. Join me, Naima Latif, every morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, as we bring you stimulating discussions about the issues affecting our lives. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution, Press the blue button that says follow and get our daily topics every morning directly to your email and your smartphone. Hi, I'm Naima Latif, executive producer of the Female Solution Radio Show. We invite you to call in 515-605-9325 and participate in this daily think tank as we examine the challenges we face and develop solutions that restore peace and harmony. We are global transformers, changing the world from the way it is to the way it should be. We are one. Wherever we live on this earth, we are one human family. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to extend a greeting to all the members of our family, whenever and wherever you may be listening around the world. To our family in China, Ni Hao. In India, Namaste. In Japan, Konnichiwa. In Korea, Annyeonghaseyo. In Russia, Zdrastutsye. In Germany, Guten Tag. In Poland, Dzień Dobry. In France, Bonjour. In Spain, Hola. In Italy, Ciao. In Egypt, Athen Wasata. In Ghana, Akwaba. In Nigeria, Peleo. In South Africa, Saobona. In Senegal, Nangadeh. In Kenya, Jambo. In Israel, Shalom. In Pakistan, Afghanistan, Palestine, and Saudi Arabia, Assalamu alaikum. Greetings, and may peace be upon you all. Join us live on the on air radio network. Call 727. 727- Seven three one five one nine two. We want to talk to you. Because talking is what we do. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning on the Female Solution Grand Rising. Long talk radio. And thank you for joining on all of our social media platforms, uh, blogtalkradio.com, the Female Solution, the On Air Everywhere dot com. Uh, platform as well as our social media platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and all that other good stuff. It is Monday morning, February 26th. It's the last Monday in the month already. Where has the month gone? You know, we've been focusing on love this month, but love from the inside out. That's the kind of love that we're talking about. And we will be sharing also uh, the activities from the weekend. But right now I wanna say happy Earth Day, birthday, born day. If you're celebrating a birthday, we're celebrating it with you. So uh, let us, let the party begin. Oh, and also let us keep in mind the sick 
and the shut-in because somebody somewhere is in need of prayer. So let's just take a moment and lift them up in prayer. Because this planet need prayer, okay? And if you are listening online, we would love to have your comments on the show. On, And you will be able to call in at 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak as well as the On Air Everywhere switchboard 727-731-5192. And remember to set those DVRs for the Higher Learning Network TV show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19, and 24-7 on the World Wide Web. And there you go, Terry. If you are headed out and about today, it is your usual Monday morning madness on the expressways. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have to be out there, and I know you are too if you're not heading out this morning. But if you are, I just always say allow some extra time because time ticks away in the morning and then you'll be rushed the rest of the day and you wonder why, what's going on. Why is um, everything going cuckoo here? Because it's Monday morning, that's why. Uh, if you want something crazy to happen, just wake up on Monday morning and watch it happen. That's what I say. And this is a perfect example of it. And you see how cool, calm, and collected I am with this? Because I'm used to it. It just never, it never fails. Something always happens. So welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. I am your host, Zelda Speaks. And we will be giving you a, tra a traffic update in which you can judge by the uh, how much time you've got to get yourself where you're going oh and by the way uh traffic and weather is sponsored by karen kelly of itex.com if you are a business owner or an entrepreneur uh, you have products or services to sell to offer the general public um, in this country and every other country you can do that and I hope you've been watching the show uh, Shop with Zoe, because if you haven't, you've been missing out. <coughs> Excuse me. Traffic and weather sponsored by Karen Kelly of Pytech.com. This is a barter agency. Nothing illegal here. It allows you to use what you have, products and services, instead of cash. And it's legally uh, represented, uh, recognized by the IRS. Uh, we have went to Alaska. Well, no, we haven't went to Alaska. We've been to the Caribbean. But we've been... Excuse me, we've traveled, we've bought cars. You can go to the um, Continental uh, 52 excuse, states, hotels, uh, timeshares, all that good stuff. Just tell her that Zelda sent you because you'll get $100 to go shopping immediately. Can somebody say immediately? Yeah, you can go shopping immediately. So, But you got to remember the promo code Zelda, Z-E-L-D-A, uh, always giving thanks to the ancestors, those who came before my came before me to make my way possible, Richard Pegui, uh, Yvonne Daniels, yes, and those who are still, <coughs> excuse me, get this frog out my throat this morning, mm, get a little tea, it'll be all right. Anyway, uh, there are no reported delays on CTA and Metro, but there's on, there's ongoing uh, repairs on Lakeshore Drive Bridge from Grand Avenue to Randolph. It's closed, so find you another way to get around because that's not going to work. As we take a look at the Kennedy, it is 29 minutes inbound, 24 on the reverse. Inbound on the Kennedy, excuse me, on the Edens is 26 in and 21 out. On the Eisenhower, you know that's another story. It's always hot mess on the Eisenhower. It's 38 minutes in and 30 minutes on the reverse. It's pretty slow there. Uh, and on the Stevenson, it's 20, 36 in and 28 out. On the Dan Ryan, there's a delay at 31st Street, so expect delays 28 in and 20 out. On the Bishop Ford, traffic backed up, uh, flowing into the Ryan, so expect delays there as well. It's 16 in and 15 out. On Lakeshore Drive, it is Excuse me, Dusabo Lakeshore Drive. This is Black History Month, right? Even though we're not black, that's another show. Uh, Dusabo Lakeshore Drive, 11 minutes in and 10 minutes out. 
And that is your traffic and weather sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. Be sure and tell her that Zelda sent you so you can get your $100 right away. Okay. All right. I just thought I'd share that with you. Why, oh, why is there no sun up in the sky? Now, no, don't sing it because you have paid them royalties, girl. Mm -mm, I got, I'm, I'm not doing that. Grand Rising. Okay. Thank you, On Air Daily News. Yeah. Uh, issues there. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. All righty. It is that time of the morning. And it's time for your Monday morning meditation but before we do that we will have your monday morning word of the day which comes from mike house you remember mike house fellow journalist right mike house sends me a daily word every single day i'm on his list just like um you're on somebody's list i'm on somebody's list we're all on somebody's list and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the word and you can share it. How about that? Monday, February 26, 2024, I share my experiences. I have considered how our ancestors shared experiences compared with ours today. The manner of communication has changed, but still they communicated messages of events. A shared experience with family and friends was always present. The need to gather in whatever manner is a necessity for a beloved community. Honoring this divine connection grows out of our spirit in one way or another. God is the divine spirit that divines, that binds every generation. The infinite intelligence that guides right decisions, a constant presence that moves us day by day, day by day, moment by moment, know that we are all connected. Whether you like it or not, it is what it is. No, that was just me. As we continue, I know there are differences in generational experiences. I understand that adaptation of our communication nature has changed over time. Yes, it has. I now enjoy a shared experience by small text. No, I don't. I can't I barely see what I'm reading now, <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. I now enjoy a shared experience by email, text, call. I do like text though, or video. I acknowledge and I am grateful for all ancestors shared experiences. Thank you, love, in me, through me, in me, as me, around me, through the Christ within. And so it is. And honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land with the Lord, which the Lord, your God, gives you. And that's taken from Exodus 20 and 12. And thank you so very much for that. Greatly appreciate that, Mike House. And it is now time for your Monday morning mindfulness meditation. And you know what that means, right? This is the time of the day that we spend with ourselves. Because as the day progresses, we kind of forget about us because we're so busy taking care of everybody else, right? Nah, nah we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that today. We're going to start this day out loving us. And how do we do that? With breathing, which is one of the most powerful things that you can do on um, for yourself on the planet. Because we are often rushed in a hurry to do something, to go somewhere. And we forget about us being calm and collected. So nothing ruffles your feathers. But you can't do that if you aren't prepared. So that's why I'm here with Monday Morning Mindfulness to prepare you. So we simply begin the process by simply breathing in and breathing out. That's all we're doing. It's so simple. It 
just usually escapes us. But I don't want it to escape us today. I want us to start our day out doing the thing that will help keep us centered during the course of the day. And this is your stress relief session. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Yes, and it's now it's time for your Monday morning mindfulness meditation where we take the time to go within and level the playing field for all this chaos that's going on out here. Honey, we bring it in and we breathe and we move through it with ease. So that's why we practice breathing. So let us begin to prepare for our Monday morning mindfulness meditation because this will help you in times of chaos and confusion. And trust me, if you're living in this body, in this planet, you're going to go through some things. So the only way that, well, I shouldn't say the only way, but the best way I know is to bring it in with the breath and let it go with the breath. So that's what we're going to do. And from time to time, you'll hear this sound. And that's just a reminder to refocus because the brain is going on your to-do list, work, school, shopping, transportation, yada, 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 whole nine, your brain never stops, never shuts off. So we just remind it to redirect it to the breath. So we breathe in through the nose, hold it for about four seconds and then blow it out. So let us close our eyes. You should not be looking at me, but the inside of your eyelids. That's what you should be looking at. Okay, so close your eyes and begin the process of breathing in. And breathing out. That's all we're doing is breathing. And as you breathe in, we don't have to breathe together as long as you're breathing. You want to feel your chest expand. When your chest expands like that, you'll know that you're getting the effect of the breathing experience. If you just breathe in shallow, you're not gonna get it, it's simple. You have to make your chest expand and collapse, okay? It's like we're doing a breathing dance. Hey, the breathing dance, well, all right now. Okay, I digress. Inhale deeply, hold it, and exhale. Ooh, just that one breath felt good. I felt it, did you feel that? If you didn't, let's do it again. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. Oh, that feels good. Let's do that again. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. As we continue to breathe in and breathe out, we give thanks for the power of the breath. Inhale as we give thanks for the power of the breath because someone somewhere may be on a breathing apparatus, have respiratory issues. And look at you, breathe it all on your own. Inhale some more. Hold it. And exhale. And as you exhale, bring those arms up over your head and do a little twist there. Yeah, baby, it's time to do the higher learning hip row yeah just keep breathing inhale and exhale and just be sure it's deep breaths okay as you are stretching if you can if you're sitting up in a chair like me you can turn around and bring that the, the liver and the, the bladder and the pancreas and the spleen and give them all a little 
wake up juice this morning. Yeah, because see, we've been sleeping, sleeping six, eight hours all night. And we need to wake up the inside organs too. That's why we move the body. That's why I'm going to the gym when I get off of here because I've been sitting here for two hours. I will be sitting here for two hours. And chiropractor says that's not good. You need to move, lady. You need to move. And I see all of our seniors just sitting all day. Baby, you got to walk. If you can't walk, sit in your chair and move your limbs because the body needs movement. That's why we breathe in. And we breathe out. After we hold it for four seconds. Once more, breathe in. Hold it. Keeping your mind on the breath as we blow it out. As we breathe in. Bring all that energy from the breath up to the top of the head, down through the forehead, through the face. And as the breath lands on the shoulders, we rotate those shoulders. As my sister from another, Mr. Vieta Robinson, would say, roll those joints, baby. We ain't talking about the can you smoke. We talking about the can that you move right here. Yeah, roll those shoulders. Rotate those shoulders. Because we sit all day. We just, I know, I hold all my tension right here. Right here. That's why I pat myself. And this is something I learned in Tai Chi. Yes, it's to pat those extremities. Pat them down, especially on the heart side. Yeah, pat the body. Let us know. Get things moving up in here as we breathe in. And as we breathe out. Breathe in faith. Hold it. And exhale fear. Breathe in faith. No matter what you're going through, it didn't come to stay. It's just a test. Breathe out. Fear. Once more, breathe in faith. Hold it. And breathe out fear. As we continue the process of breathing in and continuing to send the breath down through the solar plexus and the arms and the hands and the sides, and the stomach, and the back. We continue breathing in, holding it, and breathing out, sending more love, light, and energy of the breath down through the sides, and the hips, and the thighs, and the knees. And I give thanks for these glorious knees, and whatever part of your body is talking to you, listen to it, because it's got a message, and it might be to get up off your mm -mm and walk. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, as we breathe in, and as we breathe out, sending more love, light, and energy down through the legs, and the ankles, and the feet, the top, the bottom. Oh, I just love wiggling my toes. Don't you love wiggling your toes as we breathe in? Hold it. And as we breathe out, breathe in face. Hold it. And exhale fear. And just sit with the breath for just a moment and listen to whatever the divine mind is telling you. You've been asking for answers and you can't hear them because of all the noise around you as you breathe in. Hold it. And as you exhale, blow it up. It is when we become quiet that we hear things that we've never heard before. The world is so noisy. Continue breathing in and out. And sometimes we have to shut the noise out as we breathe in. Hold it. And exhale. As we breathe in. Bringing the breath back up through the hips and the back and the sides and the arms as we stretch over our head more and more. We stretch and move this body and rotate those shoulders backwards and forwards. As we bring the energy back up from the hips and the sides, back up to the shoulders. And I take these hands, like this is my shoulders right here, and just knead them. just Or rub them, whatever, whatever works for you. This is what I do. Because this is where I hold my tension. And I want to get rid of the tension. And I can do that 
by using these hands and by breathing. As we breathe in, hold it. And exhale. As we breathe in, hold it. And exhale. We give thanks for the power of the breath, knowing that we are at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. As we continue breathing in, and as you exhale, bring your head forward, blow it out, and slowly rotate that head to the left. That's why you're sitting up straight. Rotate that head to the left, around to the back, slow down. You want to feel this experience. And slowly bring it around to the right, around to the front, head up, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, bring the head back down, chin to chest, slowly rotate that head to the right. I want you to feel the increments. I want you to feel the stretch in your neck. That's why you should just be getting to the back. Slow down, moving too fast. And feel that stretch as you go over to the left side and slowly bring that neck around to the front. Does that feel good? Head up, inhale deeply. Bring the head back down, chin to chest, and slowly rotate that head to the right. Mm-hmm. Around to the back. Slow down. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. And bring it around to the left and back around to the front. Head up. Inhale deeply. And look to the left as far as you possibly can, feeling a stretch in the right side of the neck. You should feel it right here. Mm -hmm. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. Okay, inhale deeply. And bring your head back straight. And exhale. Pull it out. Inhale. And look to the right as far as you possibly can, feeling a stretch in the left side of the neck. You feel that? Yeah, that's right. That stretch everything on this body, honey. Everybody, every part of the body needs love. And bring it back. Exhale. Inhale once more. Hold it. And exhale. And whatever challenge that you're going through at this moment, let us begin the process of giving thanks. Because whatever the challenge is, it came to teach you a lesson, many, many lessons that we may or may not be able to see, but let us give thanks because when we give thanks, it opens the door for the answers to come through. As we breathe in, hold it. And as we exhale, we give thanks for the power of the breath that will help keep us strong, that will help keep us cool, calm, and collected in times of chaos and confusion. Because we do what? We do not buy into the madness that is in front of us. We go within. And we do what? We breathe in. And we blow it out. And if you got a little funk on your breath, Little stank, forgot to brush your teeth. <laughs> when they come all up in your Kool Aid and don't know the flavor, you blow that funk on them, baby. I promise you that they will get back. And if they don't, they like funk. What can I say? They want. They need to be functified. Well, they need to go see Bootsy for that boot seller, baby. And that is your Monday morning mindfulness meditation. So remember, when you are challenge during the course of the day know that whatever it is just give thanks and it may be some hell of an experience but give thanks anyway because it came to teach you something and i promise you whatever that lesson is if and when you get it you probably won't retreat it, uh, repeat it again but let's just remember to breathe in and to breathe out and remember you will wonder why you're walking around today feeling so good. How is that possible? Because you've triggered the happiness gene 
you've triggered the receptors in the brain that tell you that you feel good. And you wonder why you walk around feeling good all day. Hmm. It's because you did that breathing. Boop. Okay. As Osada would say, boop. <laughs> that is your Monday morning mindfulness meditation. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you will share it. And I hope you will go to our, excuse me, my YouTube page, Zelda Speaks or Zelda Speaks Mindfulness and subscribe. And you'll see other good stuff there. Alrighty. Well, it is time for our Monday morning mindfulness break. It is 7.30, uh, 1. And when we come back, you will hear a little bit about what happened uh, this weekend at the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest. This is a contest that we have uh, every last Sunday of the month where teens between the ages of 13 and 19. And uh, Naima says we need to do the, 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 the teens, the tweens, and the tots now because we get so many videos that are not of the age bracket. So we're, we're going to start the teens, tweens, and the tots, okay? And if you have a teen or a tween or a tot and they can sing and dance and do some fabulous things, I can't wait to show you some of these videos. Have them email a one-minute video clip to uh, show at gmail.com. Now, this uh, one-minute clip or less has to be an MP4 file, and you can get that by going to YouTube and getting your own channel. It's free. Do not send us uh, an MOV file or an MP3 or any of that. It has to be a, a MP4. Okay. So I just wanted to share that with you. Send that one minute video clip to hlntvshow at gmail.com and we'll get back to you. I would like to share with you one of our most celebrated contestants. Looking for the word, couldn't even think of it. And uh, he's from, I think, Ontario, Canada. Dynamite Love Boy. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's up, guys? Once again, y'all, yeah, I'm pretty sure you know my name, but let's start all, all over again. My name is Rosalind Yusuf, and I'm 13 years old. I was born, and I was ready to born in Toronto, Canada. Six IX. And my passion has been always acting since I was a little kid because I really enjoyed the acting. It's like you. But it's another version of you. So fun fact about acting, it got specific performance, memorization work, all of that fun stuff. And without further ado, guys, let's just get straight to the video. What are you guys waiting for? I wonder what's on Nick today. No offense, Peggy. So why are you being funny? Finally, <laughs> some peace. <laughs> Who did that? I'm coming with the belt. That young man is simply phenomenal. I, that's all I have to say. We are honored to have him here on The Female Solution and the Higher Learning TV show. What you're looking at in the screen here, our new news channel, Higher Learning Network News. And I will be sharing that with you shortly, right after this commercial break. So stay close. <laughs> We have an opportunity to transform the whole global society in the next 50 years. 50 years from now, the Earth will be populated by a new generation of adults, many of whom are yet unborn. Our mission is to nurture them in childhood with love, guidance, and protection, and to raise them in healthy, happy families. 
it re-imparts values of compassion, generosity, and respect for fellow human beings in the next generation of children, they will create a world where people can live together in peace. This is our goal. Be a part of the transformation. Get your copy of the book, The Female Solution. Go to www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimahlatif.com. Do you want to live in a world without war? Join our global peace movement. Have we called your world peace and restoration of light, transcend culture, religion, ideology, and other boundaries to achieve peaceful harmony and a global society? HWPL is committed to bringing world peace and cessation of war through peaceful dialogue between religious groups. I'm Director Shinsu King of the HWPL Chicago Branch of North America. Join us for our next gathering. Call 773-580-1501 and be a part of the movement for world peace. Email us at chicagohwpl at gmail.com. Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed into the swing of things? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Delta Station for so your Monday morning mindful sessions on Blog Talk Radio. Thank you for joining us back here on The Female Solution. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness on the Higher Learning Network TV show as we bring Black History to a close, Black History Month. Well, actually, it's Black Her Story Month. And as you can see, Black Her Story Month continues. And we are celebrating my sister, from the Soul Ingredient Catering. Lord have mercy, Lorraine Devereaux Wilson. This phenomenal sister, and in case you're wondering where this is, it's on our, on our blog at uh, tumblr.com, Higher Learning TV Show. This sister is, uh, let's see, a sister from another mister, is um, a young lady that I went to college with and met her and we worked at WGCI radio together uh, for some years and she was a hair 
not hairstylist. She was a beautician. She had a beauty shop. And when she stopped doing hair, because I had to do my hair, I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to go now? <laughs> Hence locks, okay? And uh, she started cooking. I was like, oh, girl, I know you can cook like that. She said, yeah, girl, I'm going to start me a catering business. So she's been in catering business for some years now. And just this past Wednesday at the Chicago Cultural Center, she was honored by uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson of uh, Chicago. And I just want to share th this uh, little bit here with you. Mayor Brandon Johnson and his lovely wife acknowledged the fabulous assortment of food provided by Loren Wilson of Soul Ingredient Catering, LLC, and her outstanding team. And the evening delight was filled with surprises like the salmon, uh, cream cheese delights, finger food, and this is what I called it, the greens and sweet potato and chicken parfait, but she called it something else. I forgot what it was, but I'm sure if she calls in, she'll let us know. But you know, whatever it was, it was delicious. And the complete table of her historical desserts. The most outstanding dish was the cookies that looked like stamps celebrating the accomplishment of women. Her story rocks. Her story rocks. Can you say that with me? Her story rocks. If you believe in her story, too, let us know. We'd love to have your uh, comments in the section. Had we not seen the movie Hidden Figures, we would have never known women like this had made such valuable contribution. Actresses Taraji P. Henson starred in this movie with Octavia Spencer and Janelle Monae in the, in the movie Hidden Figures. Weren't you shocked when you saw that? I knew I was. I was very shocked. And they all played valuable roles in bringing her story to life. But this is what's really going to freak you out. Well, maybe it's not the right word, but I said it. I said what I said. Women's stories have often been hidden for centuries, but finally coming to light. Like Mildred Blount, milliner to the stars, who provided hats to the stars in the film industry, whose designs were taken from her and she was not given credit for her work. So she got a grant and decided to do what she had and had to do. So and and this is the video that well you'll have to go to the page on our blog to see it and they will let you see that. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to pause it for a second because I this is a young lady who uh shared this information on TikTok. My niece is always telling me, "Auntie, you got to get on uh, all the other social media channels. Baby, how many channels do I have to get on? Good Lord. But thank you for sharing this with me because when I saw this, I was like, uh, yeah, we need to continue her story because people just don't know. And I can imagine if I don't know, well, I don't know. I may be the last person to, 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 to learn, but uh, I'm learning it, so I am sharing it with you, and I want you to share it with someone else. Her name is Mildred Blount. All those Hollywood hats you've seen all over the years, back in the 20s and 30s, you thought it was <clears throat> someone else. It was a sister back there in the room doing what she's doing, so let me share this with you. Let's see what she has to say. Designed the hats and gone with the wind. Let's talk about how she did it. Her name is Mildred Blount. She was passionate about making hats. She was passionate about history. She merged the two together. And one of the projects she did was created 87 miniature hats. They were featured at a New York World Fair. The producer's wife of Gone with the Wind sees these hats at the fair and was like, I want the person that made those hats. During this time, she's working for a hat company, John Frederick, which is like the royalty of hat making in New York. So that's who gets the credit, not Mildred Blount. She ends up getting a grant, so she's able to go out on her own and start her own company with her sister. She ended up becoming the first black member of the Motion Pictures Costumes Union. So now this would allow her to work for films and get credit for her own work. Mildred Blount a black milliner, a black hat maker who made hats for Joan Crawford, Ginger Rogers, Gone with the Wind. One of the things she said that I loved was, I do this work so that anybody who sees it can know the hidden possibilities of women. I love that. Please share this story with at least one person and move this history forward. We honor and we celebrate Miss Mildred Blount. Peace.
Black stories we should all know. A black woman designed the hats and gone with the wind. Let's talk about how she did it. Her name is Mildred Blount. She was passionate about making hats. She was passionate about history. She merged the two together. And one of the projects she did was created 87 miniature hats. They were featured at a New York World Fair. The producer's wife of Gone with the Wind sees these hats at the fair and was like, I want the person that made those hats. During this time, she's working for a hat company, John Fredericks, which is like the royalty of hat making in New York. So that's who gets the credit, not Mildred Blount. She ends up getting a grant, so she's able to go out on her own and start her own company with her sister. She ended up becoming the first black member of the Motion Pictures Costumes Union, so now this would allow her to work for films and get credit for her own work. Mildred Blount, a black milliner, a black hat maker who made hats for Joan Crawford, Ginger Rogers, Gone with the Wind. One of the things she said that I loved was, I do this work so that anybody who sees it can know the hidden possibilities of women. I love that. Please share this story with at least one person and move this history forward. We honor and we celebrate Miss Mildred Blount. Peace. Black I just had to show you that twice. Why? Because you need to know. Somebody somewhere doesn't know that. And now that you know it, you've got to share it. Mildred Blount, milliner. Besides, I love the little baby girl's locks. You know I like the locks. So if you have not been told about that, just think about all of the centuries. Now I was about to say decades, centuries of information that has been hidden from you. And it's also probably been hidden from you that there are grants available and that is something that the higher learning network has been sharing with uh communities all over i don't know last 20 years and if you are a business owner or an entrepreneur and you need a grant then you need to reach out to, to uh, higherlearningnetwork.org and they can just uh, steer you in the right direction if you're watching and you want um, grant information, just put grant information in the in the comments and you can also text them to us uh, and put grant, uh, grant info when you send that text and I will give you that number right here. It is 312-383-9749. Now don't call, but text. 312-383-9749. I'm saying that for the people who are on the switchboard. And we've got some calls on uh, the switchboard as well, and which I will be taking shortly, but I just wanted to remind you of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's go to the phone line. 334-895. You are live on the Female Solution and Higher Learning Network podcast. Hi, who's this? Where are you calling from? Oh, praise God, praise God, grand rising, mother God and father God. Let us be thankful for another day, my sister. Hi, who's this? Well, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to give you one yes, one yes. Let's see what the spirit says. This is your brother from another mother. I'll give you a hint, 63 good, just the apostolic church of God. Now you, you, you. you, 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 you Okay, work. Brother Neil. Uh, well, thank him, Salam, Brother Neil. Excuse me. I remember faces. I apologize, Neil. I remember faces. Sometimes, I, yeah. So, so please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. I. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. You are absolutely right. Yeah, that's, did you enjoy, enjoy the breathing exercise this morning? Or did you participate? Yes, or? I did. Okay. Yes, I did. And how are you feeling yes, now? Feeling much better. Hmm. Feeling much better. Yes, sir. Say you may not may not come when you want them, but always right on time. Uh, oh, my brother's um, uh, tribute to my brother Patrick Bradley, who did lakes, who redesigned Lakeshore Drive. Yes, you remember that. Yes. Yes. Uh, Magdown Memory Lane. Magdown Memory Lane. I saw a photograph. Say that again. I saw a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Magdown Memory Lane. Yeah, it's so sometimes it's those memories that keep us um in a place. Sometimes those memories keep us stuck and sometimes they bring us joy which one does it do 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 for you it doesn't both for me when you, well, it depends on how we how we manage those memories mm. god brings all things back to memory oh and so how we how we manage those memories that's that's up to us and god gives us free will and we can choose to compartmentalize in the way we want Right. Yes, it, and we'll burn. <laughs> and we'll burn. Like Daniel and the lion being, like Daniel and the lion being a meat sacrament to go on a minute ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daniel and the lion there. So therefore, you know, it says when you eat, but it wouldn't God take one you no more than you can bear. Fire burns. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so very much, Neil, for joining us this morning on Monday morning mindfulness. It has been a pleasure chatting with you this morning, and I hope you will share this video with someone. And tell Amen, Neil. Thank you so much for calling this morning. It has been, as Les Brown would say, it's been a plump, pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. <laughs> thank you, Neil. <laughs> and thank you for, yes, sir. And thank you for calling in. If you want to call in this morning, we'd love to hear what you have to say. But in the meantime, in between time, I want to share with you the experience that we had over the weekend for the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest. So if you know you got some teens in your family, 13 to 19, well, as Naima says, we're doing uh, teens, tweens, and tots now. Anyway, uh, I want to share this with you from over the weekend and uh, kudos to Victor Sarmiento 
who arranged this, the clothing drive. We were broadcasting live from the American Legion Cicero uh, number 96. Uh, well, I'll tell you all about it on here. So check this out. Let me know. Welcome. Uh, we are on location today. Victor, uh, our ambassador, excuse me, Victor Sarmiento is the commander of the American Legion C uh, Cicero Post number 96. And as you can see, he's a little bit out of breath. Yes, I was throwing the, the greens. Honey, let him put some greens in there, Chad, because we're going to eat some greens today. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you for having me oh, today. Oh, and, and let's thank Loren. Yes. Uh, Loren, Chef Loren Wilson of Sold Ingredient Catering LLC. She brought some food by, you know, she catered the yes, uh, yes. Chicago Cultural Center uh, Black History Month reception just wow, with Mayor awesome. Brandon uh, Johnson just this past Wednesday. So she had some greens in the freezer. So I'm very, that's very, very happy. Potato. That's a sweet potato. I miss some sweet potatoes. Oh, I can't wait till this is broadcast. I so know, anyway. I know. anyway. Well, thank you for ha having me. And yes. Thank you, Karen. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you for allowing us to have this location available where you can come out and bring some clothes. We're here for two whole hours. Yes. We're here on behalf of the unhoused today. We don't say homeless anymore. I got to get that in my head. They're not homeless. They're unhoused, and there's a difference. So what we want to do today is to bring light to that, and the, I'm very grateful for the Chicagoland uh, veterans uh, community for helping us make that possible. And you want to tell them a little bit about what you do, Victor? Yes. Well, um, I'm a I'm a veteran. I'm an Army veteran um, from 2004, um, stationed in South Korea. I thought my career and with the army was done. No, 60 pounds later, a year and a half later. <laughs> I like to joke. I got a letter in the mail and it says, go to war, go to jail. I didn't realize that when you sign up for the military, you're obligated to do a certain amount of years in what's called the IR, inactive ready reserve. Really? So in the case of a wartime or something drastic happens, they could call you back within that time period. You just don't know that you're still in. You know, and that's what happened to me. I got a letter one day. My stepmom was like, are you in trouble? And I'm like, no, why? Because two Army officials are here looking for you. They've been looking for you since 2004. And I'm like, what? I got out in 2004. And I'm like, no, I got out honorably. I did my, my contract with the U.S. Army, which made me the man, the man I am today. And I didn't think nothing of it. When I got home that night, there was a, a packet calling me back into service for Operation Iraqi Freedom. So... I'm like, okay, it's something serious. So the next day I wake up, I call him up. Well, you didn't meet that deadline. Well, we're going to send you to Afghanistan instead. So I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ooh. You know, and it's like, I got my stuff situated that Tuesday. I told him, you know what, by this Sunday, get me on a plane and I'm back in the service and I handled all my stuff within a few days and I was shipped out. I went to Fort Jackson, started the in-processing process, and they attached me to the 41st Infantry Brigade. They're out of a unit out of Oregon. So I was the only one from Illinois. I didn't know this unit, but they assigned me. We went trained to Camp Shelby, Mississippi over there, and, and it was hot. <laughs> Mississippi's hot. Wow. You mean the shade is hot. But um, we trained up. You know, I got a lot of good video footage during that because I always like taking video and pictures, you know, so that way if something ever happens, especially in, in, in this situation, meaning that I'm going to go to war, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, let me document it. So that way my kid, uh, uh, during that time, I only had my daughter, my daughter, Janice, my firstborn. And then, um, but right now I got a total of four kids, <laughs> but um, so I can leave something behind. Right. So I document everything. Eventually I'll turn it into some type of motivational oh. video that people go and see you got to tell people's story so that way yes. it gives motivation to yes. other people yes. so i went back i got stationed over there from 06 to 07 came back i say broken but it's more like a puzzle trying to piece it together mm. and try to figure what is my new role in life so how did you become broken well it, you're in a war type of environment everybody's yeah. different you for me is the constant shells the constant bombardments the, the threat that our base in camp phoenix was, was, was getting attacked and everything but luckily we called the guy ramble he's an afghan national that when the military went to afghanistan he volunteered his time because as a, i'm not also the true the full story but he lost his family you know so he dedicated his life he lived on base a little shack a little i'm talking about a little tiny shack but he didn't care 
he wanted to be there because he knew that we were there for something good for his people. Mm. And then one one occasion, Rambo saw a suicide bomber because they get those IEDs, improvised explosive devices, and they pack the vehicles with explosives. So we're trained to know uh, of when they don't stop. Okay, we have a, a, a situation and we got to handle it. So Rambo was the first one there because he's at the front gate. He went and grabbed the guy and pulled him out. You know, because if he didn't have done that, there would have been many soldiers there. Oh, my goodness. Because right next to the front gate was where the actual soldiers would go in the morning to see what duty they had for the day. Mm -hmm. And we would just, there would be almost 10 to 20 soldiers there just waiting, you know, to get a sign. Either be in uh, security um, with the Afghan nationals coming on base or the camps to, to work. We would basically be the security to watch them in case you never know what happens. So it's just a constant knowing that today may be the day that you don't survive, or today may be the day. So you got to take that from grain of salt and like, man, I am a warrior, you got to be mentally strong. If you're not, they'll break you. Mm. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. I had to do videos every time I would leave the actual um, camp. I would, I, would, uh, I would do goodbye videos. Back in the day, it was goodbye letters. Oh, and you and they put in there. Yeah. Well, I would do goodbye videos. Okay. And I would tell my family at that, I love you no matter what. If something happens, you know, just <sighs> take a deep breath. That's what works. Inhale just and exhale. Just breathe. That's all we got to do is just breathe our way through it. Inhale deeply. <sighs> And for those of you watching at home, you can do the same. Just breathe. Whenever you are triggered for whatever reason, just breathe your way through it. That's what helps me. Yeah. So you have to accept and accept that if you die, you die. But know that there is more mm -hmm. to come after. Mm -hmm. it, does, it doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. um, you die from this physical body. Yeah. The spirit lives forever. So, yeah, so that's the concept. Fear whenever we will leave the base or mm. if we get attacked during sleep. I never slept when I was over there. I never slept. I We, had, we were like a little shacks, okay. uh, like two by four panel shacks that we that they built with the first ones that arrived there. And then we came in and we're just like a little, I want to say five feet by five feet cubicle. That was our space, a living space that only fit like a, a, a two bunk bed or a bunk bed. And everything and this is your space so you got to make use of it so what i did i took the bottom part off and, and that was my living room <laughs> ah. and i slept on the top and the reason i slept on the top because i wanted to see who was coming in and out uh, and that's yeah. why i couldn't sleep i was oh. sleep with i had an m4 rifle just like an m16 a little shorter stock and in, in the front is shorter but i would sleep with it every night in case something did happen okay. you know but um but yes, and I'm sorry, I lose focus at times because when, okay. I, when I think of this, uh, I get very <laughs> emotional because it's not an easy tap, uh, subject to talk about. And a lot of veterans, there's a lot of things about veterans where we struggle with that we don't talk about it. But you gotta talk about it, like it's gotta get it out of you. Exactly. Because the longer it stays in, the more damage it does to you, not only to your brain, but your heart, liver, lungs, spleen, spine, all that stuff. Yeah. That's why they say we have issues in our tissues. <laughs> <laughs> we all got yes, issues yes, you in know. our tissues. I want to back up just a little bit. You this said issue. Afghan national. Af what is well, that? It's just uh, like someone from Afghanistan, a citizen of Afghanistan. Just like we're citizens oh. of the U.S. Oh, okay. So we just, I just say Afghan national. Oh, okay. But because of all this that I've experienced in the military, the first four years, um, yes, I did experience some struggles because of 9-11. We had to man the walls. We had to man uh, the front gates. We'll take uh, our job as a soldier, a soldier. So we had to learn how to find bombs. We had to investigate. Ooh. And with the different tools that they gave us in the, in the cold, in the hot heat, 24 7 we're yeah. there at the at the front you know so that was that during 9 11 it wasn't as drastic as what we had to deal with in iraq and afghanistan being on the ground boots on the ground Ooh. you know but that right there started the process like wow i'm in the army yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah. because of all that is why i created the chicagoland veterans facebook group mm. and chicagoland veterans community page because even coming back, trying to piece together the pieces, I still struggle. And but I never had anybody advocate for me, and I always thought I was alone. And if anybody that struggled, we all feel the same. We're alone. No one 
is their force. It'd be nice to have a leg up in life and be somebody say, hey, I got your back or I got your six, like we say in the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, no matter what happens, you know what? We're going to, your, your struggle is my struggle now. And we're going to go ahead and get through this together. And once we do, then we're going to be able to help somebody else get through this struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, like one of the things that we struggle with a lot, a lot of veterans deal with veteran suicide. You know, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. Why is it that we think to take that? Mm-hmm. You know, it's because of what we felt over there and coming back to society that we don't feel that we fit in. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing veterans don't talk about, but we need to talk about because telling our story is, is motivation and inspiration to somebody else going through the struggle. Right. doesn't matter if they served or in the military, just anybody struggling, struggle is a struggle no matter what. Right. You know, so this page here has allowed me to cope. It's my mm. therapy oh. because I do go through a lot and then with my job. Like I mentioned, remember that one time at the the, the luncheon that I first met you? Mm-hmm. You interviewed me? Mm-hmm. You know, we struggle. And not, and our employers don't, don't understand the situation of veterans that they go. You can't just talk to us anyway because we, we do some things do trigger us and we try to retain it. Understood. But as much as we retain it, mm-hmm. what's going to happen is, who are the ones that are going to end up feeling the aftermath of our stress of the stress? Our families, our right. friends. Right. And they, they, they're not at fault, but it's sometimes it's easier said than done. When Yeah, it's easier said than done. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. There is a, a um, the video is very long, but you can go and see it yourself. So I hope you will share this with someone because I had no idea that suicides by veterans are as intense as they are. There's a lot of that going on. So thank you, Victor Sarmiento. You can go uh, see that. Victor and his team, and he's the ambassador for for that location over there in Cicero. And that clothing drive is something that we will be doing monthly. Thank you for the clothes. Thank you for the shoes. But they need blankets. They need to keep warm. They need, um, what do you call it, butane. So if you can find it in your heart, get some blankets. You see uh, unhoused people on the street, ask them what they need. You ain't got to go have a, a cup of coffee with them. That would be nice too, you know, to show your humanity. But you have got to open your heart because you know you got something in that closet you have not been wearing or a blanket that you could share with uh, someone in need so feel free to go to our youtube page and you will see that higher learning tv show it's all there and i will also share with you uh some videos that we did from um, other events such as um, not uh, Naima, uh, you are my man this morning, girl. Um, Loren Wilson, chef Loren Wilson. We are still celebrating Women's Her Story Month, so she will be joining us right after the commercial break. So stay close, we'll be right back.
You may have a great product. You may even have a fantastic website. But how do you let people know you exist? Tell them. Promote your business on one of the most dynamic shows on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution. You'll reach an enthusiastic audience of more than 100,000 loyal daily listeners with a specially designed 30-second ad that will drive customers directly to your website. We'll send you statistics as tracked by Blog Talk Radio to let you know the numbers and demographics of those hearing your advertisement. Your ad will run during the live two-hour morning show from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and it will be heard all day long by listeners who listen to the archive shows. You will reach our worldwide audience on their laptops, iPods, iPads, and cell phones. Watch the orders for your products or service increase. Just go to our website, www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimahlatif.com. And click on the radio advertising page. Send us your words. We'll create a 30-second radio ad. And watch your business increase worldwide. Hi, I'm Dr. C.J. of Moral Health, where we combine orthopedic manual therapy and neuroscience to treat the whole person. Help them for the day and keep them moving. Doesn't matter how, just keep them moving, doing something you enjoy, walking, dancing, rolling on the floor with your dogs or kids, really anything. The body creates movement to keep its bones, joints, and muscles happy. Even our mental health and internal organs and digestive system rely on our movements. Thanks for being a part of the Higher Learning Network on the Female Solution. Grand Rising. And thank you for joining us back here on the Female Solution and the Higher Learning Network TV show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 and on Channel 19 and 24-7 of the World Wide Web. What you are looking here is our Instagram channel for the Homeless Project that, um, <coughs> excuse me, we went out over this weekend and you'll see lots of videos there. You see the food we pre pre prepared for them. So feel free to check it out. Uh, that's Instagram.com, HLN.Homeless.Project. And thank you to Chef Tony and all those who come who want to share uh, your blessings uh, with the unhoused, even though it says HLN on Instagram, HLN.Homeless.Project. Um, you know, they're no longer called homeless anymore. It's called the, they're called the unhoused, unhoused. So forgive me for um, not being, what do they call it, uh, politically correct. But I am politically correct in showing you this next screen because this is a young woman whom I have known for some years and she has just been consistent with everything that she does as it relates to her life, her business, her family. And we are continuing uh, the celebration with Black Her Story Month. And we're going to the phone lines to open up the phone for our very own Black Her Story uh, maker. And that would be Loren Devereaux Wilson. Welcome to the show, Loren. Grand Rising, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Grand Good morning. Rising. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. I know you got a full day, so I really appreciate your coming on and speaking to our audience and allowing us to celebrate you because your story is important. I don't know if you saw the story before yours. Um, her name was Mildred Blount. We did not, I did not know, and probably a lot of other people didn't know that, that she was the milliner to the stars. And now you are a caterer to the stars, not only to the stars, but to us common folk here in the city too. So thank you girl for them greens <laughs> and, the, and the sweet potatoes, girl. I was in love. I was like, okay, 
I, I got to say something for the other folks, but I mean, it was it was plenty. It was it was plenty, and they and they all all loved it. And I apologize for for those who are at our blog. Please go to the blog, tumblr.com h uh, excuse me tumblr.com forward slash higher learning TV show because. In there, you will see what I wrote, and 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 Lorraine, you can you can uh, say the right word because I said the wrong thing. Uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson and his lovely wife acknowledged the fabulous assortment of food provided by Lauren Wilson of Soul Ingredient Catering LLC and her outstanding team. Now, this is where I messed up. It says the evening delight was filled with surprises like the salmon cream cheese delights. I call it finger food. And this is where I messed up the green sweet potatoes chicken parfait. What was it really called? It's called the Soul Food Martini. Soul and Food uh, Martini. Okay. Soul food, soul food Martini. And basically, it consists of candy ham, chocolate chip, um, and Okay. Um, how it just felt for that night, it would have been a little bit too much um, oh. because it, they had an assortment of finger food to taste, so we didn't want to overwhelm them. Right. Well, trust me, we were not overwhelmed, honey. We were simply delighted. <laughs> I promise you, we were not overwhelmed. And the lady that was sitting next to me when you came over and sat, she was like, girl, who cooked this food? I said, a caterer, my girlfriend, Lorraine. I said, she'll be out here, don't worry. So when you came out, she looked at you, she, girl, she thought you were Santa Claus in the middle of February. Girl, we had a whole row of people talking about the food. It's like, who cooked this, Lorraine? My girl, she'll be out here in a minute. <laughs> That's No, you no, you did it all right. You did it. You definitely did it. You wowed everybody. I couldn't have done it without the wonderful team that um, surrounded me, including you. Uh, you know, we had a fabulous team. My production manager, Kendall Clark Harper, was phenomenal. Um, she was in the back um, working with all of our staff, making sure that everything came out properly. Charlene Jefferson of C2 Details Events um, assisted me in building that amazing charcuterie and grazing table. Yes. Um, they just made my business come alive. Yes. And, um, I just have to thank everyone because uh, you can't do it without a great team. You and sure I, can. I have to admit, I had one. Yeah. Well, I am honored to be a part of that team because, baby girl, you made history all up through and around through there because people, people, people still talking, walking out the door. That's all I heard was was how good the food was. And I was like, wow, I never heard people talk about a caterer like this before. Maybe I need to be in a caterer. But no, no, I don't. Stay, stay in your lane, Zelda. Mm -mm. Cooking is not your specialty. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I was like, God, I mean, you cook food I never even heard of, along with the traditional food. But I was like, wow, what is this? This is good. This is delicious. I could, I could live with this. Do you, do you need to adopt anybody? Like, you know, can I come wash the dishes or something? I mean, because the food is just off the chain. I'm sorry. And and yes, I am a little biased. But anybody who's listening, if you if you taste it, you'll be a little biased too. What do you say to the young chefs who are coming behind you, Loren, who are who have this I'm gift? Who, go ahead. I've got something great for them to be fearless with the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this has been a dream that I've had for so many years. Um, and it's funny how, how God, you know, I used to always say, God, you give me so many gifts. I don't know what to do with it. Even when you were working at GCI, you were thinking about this? When you were in radio? I, I used to 
bring food to my salon and I used to bring food to the radio station. <laughs> you know, I always entertain. Yes. You know that. Yes. So food was always um, just a thing. And not until someone said to me one day, you need to do this for a living. And I was like, hmm. Mm. You know? Oh. So um, here it is. Okay. It's here. You know, my mother... And you know, my mom was a, a big inspiration. Um, I would say all the way back to 2005, that's when the, the idea really started pressing and gnawing at me. And when my mom became sick, mm -hmm. uh, I had done catering jobs previously prior to that, but I still worked. Something always got in the way, you know. Oh, wow. um, I even attended Kendall um, Culinary School for two years. And then I got this great job and I had to leave. Uh -huh. um, but that that thought of um, being a, a great caterer still was in the back of my mind and it continued to gnaw at me. Um, but when my mother became sick, mm -hmm. uh, she said to me, I am leaving you a little package and I want you to use it to start that business that you do nothing but think about. Oh. And it took me Six years after she passed, to cast that check and mm -hmm. do what she told me to do. Six mm -hmm. years. Really? Uh, it did. Yeah. She Why so long? With, um, you know, first of all, I I always felt like that was her money. <laughs> okay. That's one thing I don't know. And um, you know, I had some money put up, and I had already started building my own kitchen, which took about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt, um, you know, I, I paid for it myself. And not until I finished did I actually take that money and, and pour it into the kitchen. Oh. You know? But um, <laughs> when I lost my job, that great job, right, um, the first thing, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't get upset. I didn't get it. The first thing I did the very next day was walk downtown, get my business license, um, do my LLC. All the things that I was afraid to do, mm -hmm. which took me six weeks, which took me one hour, may I say. I was afraid to do because I thought I didn't know how to do it or what to do. But there are people down there that will help you. And, um, it's amazing, you know. I said to myself, "You wasted all the time because you were walking in fear." So that's why I say, "Be fearless in the pursuit of what you what sets your soul on fire." Mm -hmm. Because fear will keep you from doing what God has purposed you to do. And every experience that you get in life, whether it be an entrepreneur as a hairdresser, because this is my story. I started out as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I was a hairdresser for many years. I went into radio. I went into, um, uh, I'm sorry, corporate world. And now here I am, I'm a caterer and owning my own business. And I have learned something from each and every journey. Mm -hmm. So what I would say to that young person once again is to continue forward with that dream and that vision and be patient mm. with yourself and also uh, with God or whoever, you know, that that higher power of your understanding. Just be just be um, patient because if whatever it is, if it keeps gnawing at you, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. it ain't going to go away. It's not going to go away until you do it. Yeah, it's not, not going anywhere. anywhere. And, and do it while being afraid. How's that? Yeah. So, do it while being afraid. Mm. Being afraid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I, man, I said, I can't tell you how much time I wasted. Mm. You know? Yeah. But it's okay. Because even in the time that I wasted, there was something to be learned in that experience, too. Mm. Mm. And, uh, so just keep it moving. All right. All I can say. Well, thank and you so eat much. Well and be well. Say that again. Eat well and be well. All right, now eat yeah. well and be well. I like that. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And it is because of you that I ate well and I am well. So thank you very much. <laughs> so I want to thank you. I love you so much, Zelda. You, when when you walked, when I bumped into you, I was so glad to see. You. I'm like, I hope she showed up. Yeah. I hope she showed up you know, because this one event that was so important opened up a, a, so many doors of opportunity. And you know, I was really tickled because when we go back and talk about experiences, uh -huh. as journey, I ran into so many people that I met. In the radio day. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. People that I collaborate with yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Right. All right. So, <clears throat> um, you know that's why I said every experience has a purpose. Absolutely. And uh, I want to thank you for allowing me, <clears throat> excuse me, to be a part of that experience, even though I didn't feel like it because we have our uh, teen, excuse me, uh, youth podcasting class every Wednesday. It's like a three hour class for, um, in the morning. And, and I left there at three. And I, they usually, they wear me out. These children have so much energy. It's like I had to go home and, and, and just get in the massage chair and drink a cup of tea and, and, and calm down. But I was like, oh, man, I, got it. I, 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 I gave Lorraine my word that I'd be there. So sometimes you have to talk yourself into doing something. So I said, self, you know, I talk to myself. So when you see people on the street talking to you, talking to them, said, don't think they're crazy. They're just having a conversation out loud. You just have privy to their therapy. That's what I call it, my private therapy. So I said, self. You know, if you tell your body you know, you're not gonna feel like doing it, you're not gonna do it. So I said, self, <clears throat> I feel like doing it. So I, I told myself that, and I went and I did it. So I am thankful for the opportunity to have been there because my word is my bond. We old school. We say we gonna do something, we do it. We don't find excuses. We do just that. So thank you for allowing me to part to be to be a part of this this experience. Well, we had a good time and trust and believe. There will be more, so just get ready. All right, I'm ready if you're ready. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Black Herstory Month, oh, Her Story Month with yeah. Lorraine Wilson, the sole ingredient catering. If people want to contact you, how can they do that, Lorraine? Um, they can reach me at the soul. Now that's S O L E, not S O U L. Mm -hmm. The soul ingredient.com is our email address. And uh, we also have a website at www.thesoul, S-O-L-E, ingredientscatering.com. Or you can just give me a call. I can be reached at 312-719-7530. And we do all types of events with consumers, um, you know, corporate events, not-for-profit. So, um, just reach out and we'll be able to customize the menu just for you and your budget. Yeah, baby, because that food is good. Customize, customize, customize. And if they needed a, a taste dummy, that would be me. Thank you very much. Great, greatly appreciate and yeah, that. Yeah, we do have tastings as well. So, um, if you're looking to become a client and you you want to do a tasting prior to your event, we are able to coordinate that as well all right seven excuse me three one two seven one nine seventy five thirty the sole ingredient catering for your next corporate or community event give loren wilson a call thank you loren we appreciate you girl thank you, love. I'll talk to you soon. all right love peace and hair grease as we say back in the day <laughs> it is time for our last commercial break and when we come back yes you will get a chance to hear from our very uh own chicagoan and that would be terry cummins nba hall of famer stay close we'll be right back i'm theata your holistic life coach these days, it's more important than ever to work on your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Are you consciously breathing deeply in stressful moments? Do you have a plan or daily routine to maintain balance in your awesome body? Are you struggling to be disciplined in your eating habits? <laughs> when you partner with me, I'll help you develop a personalized health plan that works for your particular lifestyle. You can find out more about me at yourholisticlifecoach.com 
where you can also review my three-step protocol to guide you to abundant health. That's yourholisticlifecoach.com, and I'm Miyake. Valentine's Day is coming up, but, but I call it Self-Nurture Day. And I read this from my very first book, Inspirational Conversations. It used to be okay. written from Troy Tyler's show on V103 and on Gospel Radio 1390. I said, February 14th, happy Nurture Yourself Day. Today and every day is one of the best days of your love life. Live it as if it were your last. Don't wait on the roses, dinner, the party, the candy, or the call. Love your own self today by doing the things you want someone else to do for, to, and with you. If you can't be happy by or with yourself, what makes you think he, she, or it will make it any better? Ooh, you need to post it up. True love does not come wrapped, bathed, or clothed in anything. True love will pour from your being like an age-old wine waiting for the cork to pop. Today, pop your own cork. Love yourself as no one else can because nobody knows better than you. Amen. Hug yourself and tell yourself, I love you. Happy Self Nurture Day. Happy Self Nurture Day to you today and every day. So please do something to make yourself happy. And thank you. Hi, my name is Terry Cummings, and you're watching the Higher Learning TV show. Well, this is the voice and the face that you have been waiting to hear from. That is NBA Hall of Famer Terry Cummings, who blessed us with his presence at the <clears throat> Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest. He was nice enough to stop by and <clears throat> encourage our youth. And we had executive producer Naima Latif on the line with us as well. And this is what you uh, Mr. Missed. General Zion, it is a pleasure and honor to have you here. Is that seat adequate for you? Yes, ma'am. May I shake your hand? Yeah. Thank you so How much. You? Come on in here with me. This is Naima Latif, our executive producer Hi, Naima. of uh, the Naima. 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 Of, of yes. solution. We're we're on we're on two different um, channels okay. here this morning. Streaming. And yes, we're streaming. Thank you so very much. Mm. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. And congratulations on the wonderful wonderful work you're doing. You represent in Chicago, especially the Roseland area. When you were coming up with Diane Latiker, she had she has kids off the block. She's really big in the Roseland area. This was like in the in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Because we moved we moved from uh, the north side to Roseland in seventy one. Oh, okay. No, I don't think she was uh she was I don't yeah, think Yeah, we've been there a long time. This uh, probably eighties or nineties. So what does it feel like to be back home? I love coming home. I think the only person who loves it more is my fiance. She you would think she lives or came from And where is she? She running around here somewhere. What's her name? Darlene. Give Darlene a shout out. Hey Miss Darlene. <laughs> so people always ask when they come to Chicago, what's the one food that you, you get here that you can't get anywhere else? Oh, it's a lot, you know, the, the um Gino's or Giordano's. Mm -hmm. uh, I Al knew he would say pizza, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I mean, for everything, you know, it's like, uh, what is it, uh, Al's, the uh, roast beef. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Al's on uh, Taylor Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I don't eat to eat, but my husband does. Well, so that's when all we I know were younger, it. we all made that trip down there to Rose Road, Road to um, Jewtown. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, what about the Jewtown poses? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can tell us Chicago, and they know about Jewtown. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah or even call it Jewtown, but they, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, 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 even though you're home, girl, you call it that. Yeah. So 
Naima, you want to have any give it have any questions for him before you, you leave? know I'm, I'm trying to remember i know we've met and i know it was an event and i think you performed and it's it's been over 20 years i'm trying to remember what organization it was and where was the event but i do recall i think you were being honored for something then and of course i was impressed with uh, your perspective of things. It's always good when you hear a hear an athlete that has community consciousness and knows how important it is to come back and give back and and inspire young people. So we want to thank you for being one of those who comes back and gives back. It's so important, and you'd be surprised. A word from you can actually turn someone's life around. Mm -hmm. No, it's my it's my heart. We've. Uh... I mean, since I left high school and went to college, one of the first things I did was uh, come, I went back to Carver High School when we started a camp where we start to just, you know, work with the kids in the Allville Garden uh, Projects area. And it wasn't a preachy thing. It was just giving them the comfort of knowing that while they were there, uh, five days, well, for a week, a year, nothing happened in, in the gardens with the young people. Like, And when I say that, I mean, uh, no deaths, no fightings, you know, because all the kids were in the camp and they were all being instructed, not just in basketball, but with just, you know, certain moral values. And then we would take them out at the end of the week. We would take them out of the uh, All Bill Gardens projects to a banquet hall in the city and, and, and show them the, some parts of the world that they would not normally see. And uh, we did that for about 23 years. We do a feeding program now in the, in the Atlanta area, um, but it's you know, and I pastor a church there going on seventeen years. Really, mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, for people who want to work with children but are afraid because they think our children are out of control and and won't won't pay attention and won't do right, what's what's a word of advice you'd give to someone who wants to do a youth program? but maybe doesn't understand the, the techniques of managing children in a loving manner. What would you advise for them? Well, I, I would tell you to be careful, but at the same time, uh, don't be afraid because mm. these young people need to know that, you know, you'll step up in them, mm. you know, however you want to put, put that. Mm. But um, with my youngest son, I, I was a single parent with him when he was in high school. So his mm. friends always wanted to come over the house and stay. So I set a prerequisite, okay, you all can come and stay, but you're going to stay the weekend. I'm going to cook for you Saturday. And then uh, Sunday morning, you're going to get up and go to church with me. Mm. And so we, uh, they went to church one the first and second time. We loaded up. We had about 15 young teenage boys wow. and um, got to the church. When they made the altar call, one by one, all the boys wound up on the altar because they had a... Uh, they had a thing that they would not, if one did something, they all would do it. So they all wound up on the altar. And so um, the reason I'm telling the story is more about what happened afterwards. Mm. When we uh, were leaving and going down the corridor to get out of the uh, church building, some lady was calling me, hello, hello, sir. And she was talking to me. And I said, yes. She said, she said can I ask you a question? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, how do you get teenagers to come to church and enjoy it because they dance the whole praise and worship out and these are street kids so they don't you know single parent homes and they, so they didn't really to them it was just music but there was some in the music they shifted them and so i told her the first thing i said to her i said you can't be afraid of them i said these kids live in my house with me you know i feed them you know, and, and I make it where it's, you know, it's a comfortable surrounding uh, for them so they can learn. Because if you do that, you can literally sit down without trying to preach. They'll ask you the questions. You don't Amen. have to worry about Amen. that Amen. extra stuff. Amen. But that's what I would tell them. All right. Well, thank wow. you for that question. We appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, glad I asked it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We will see you coming back here shortly. But before you go, I have to ask you the question. How did you go from the NBA to the pulpit? Please explain uh, that one. Because I was in the pulpit at 16. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been in ministry. I'm 62. So I've, I've been in ministry since I was 16. Really? Yeah. So who in your family, your mother, father, grandfather, who was who was the minister before you? Uh, 
my daddy's side of the family, they mm. were true Baptists. Oh, okay. So my, my mama and them, they come from Pentecost mm. and old, old <laughs> and So my grandfather on my, my mother's father, he he was the one who put a lot of it in me. He mm. saw it in me mm. and then it, you know, gradually over time it just became. Mm -hmm. you know. And he saw in you what you are seeing in others. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to the person, the, the, the child who's listening? Give us a closing comment about what how they go at their direction in life whatever challenges they're they're facing i think you just kind of we i think a lot of times we we give advice and counsel to people on the basis of the end of a thing mm. and i think that the best way to give counsel to people is is knowing that it's going to be something different tomorrow mm. you know you can you can look at it and say well we're going to do it from this angle but tomorrow is going to be something different so i would say um, you know, exercise yourself with the thought process that this is a process and that nothing is going to happen yesterday. Mm. That you're going to have to live with the process. And, I, and, I, and I'll close with this. Uh, I was listening or reading something uh, some weeks ago, and it was and and the uh, it said that uh, if your faith goes untested then your faith can't be trusted. Oh. And, and it really stuck with me because it means that if you don't carry out what your faith uh, is meant to go through, when you get to the place of where you're going through that thing, your faith will not be, you can't trust it because you didn't, you didn't allow it to be proven, oh. you know? And, and I think you, you, oh. you have, yeah, you have to, Judge it by the whole thing, mm, mm. you know, like by a piece or a part of it. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Well, thank you so very much, Mr. Terry. We appreciate you. Okay, let's take this quick picture real quick. We got to okay, then they got to bounce. So while they do that, I'm going to play a quick promo. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. I certainly enjoyed it. And I look forward to allowing you the opportunity to hear more of the complete um uh, experience we had on my blog, which is zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, but also the blog for Higher Learning TV Show. That's Tumblr, tumblr.com, Higher Learning TV Show. And you'll see it uh, right there, uh, uh, below there. Uh, this is something that we can do on a large community basis because we are our brothers and sisters keepers. We cannot wait on those who control things to make things better for us. That's not how this is going to work. And I realized that when the death of my little brother, Douglas Robinson, was murdered in 2019, and all these people came to his funeral. Uh, I said that I have got to keep in contact with these people. And I'm very grateful for the unhoused who have allowed me to come into their experience and to be of service. Because my mom taught me as a kid to go see the old folks and help them. And I was like, I don't know these people. Why am I going here? Anyway, um, Service is what it's all about, and we thank you for being of service. So if you want to go to the blog and you can keep up with all that's going on, and uh, be sure and share. It's tumblr.com. I'm sorry. Go to uh, Higher Learning Network News. I keep forgetting about that. Uh, HLN News. Once you go to higherlearningnetwork.org, uh, just click on the first icon that says uh, HLN News, and then it'll take you down to see everything you need to see. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I want to get some calls in here before we uh, leave the year. Can't do an after show today. I've got a Zoom at 930. So I have to prepare for it. Uh, if you want to uh, speak this morning, we'd love to hear what you have to say. 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak. And let me also remind you. Oh, I love what he said. He said, if uh, Terry, NBA Hall of Famer, Terry, Cummings, excuse me, Pastor Terry Cummings said, if your faith goes untested, then your faith can't be trusted. Wow, never heard that one before. If your faith goes untested, your faith can't be trusted because you didn't allow it to be proven. Okay. 
I get that. So that is why you will continue to have um, challenges and give thanks for those challenges because those challenges are there to teach you a lesson. And we often don't want to learn the lessons because the lessons are just too painful. And, you know, that's life. What can I say? Uh, let's go to the comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say uh, this morning. Uh, Beata, my sister from another mister says, grand rising, beautiful sister. Thank you. And enjoying your energy of love and listening to your callers and guests always learn new things. Yes, if you're not learning, you're not growing. So you need to be growing. And you can grow in different ways just by learning to listen. How is that possible, Zelda? Well, if you go to facebook.com and type in Viata's Tiny Village, you see Tiny House Village, you'll see her uh, logo right there. If you go to YouTube and type that in, Viata's Tiny House Village, you will get a chance to hear what I heard, what we heard last night. See, we're on seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on blogtalkradio.com, the female solution. And on Tuesdays, it is Asada with the Metaverse Gathering of the Griots. And on Wednesday, it's Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid, Repairing Family Relationships. On Thursday, it's Shop with Zoe International. She shows you how to get the hookup, how to do places, how to go places internationally that you may have not known about. Mm -hmm. Shop with Zoe. And Friday, Health and Well-Being with Viata. See, Viata has two shows. She's so powerful. She got two. She's on Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. And then on Sunday, 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And let me go back to Saturday because we have rotating uh, hosts on Saturday. On the first Saturday, it's Nonviolent Communication with Jana. On the second Saturday, it's Mama Joy. And third Saturday, move around with Deborah and... Fourth Saturday, it's the Global Virtual Team Palace Contest. And thank you for all of you who called in to support. And a special thank you for those who came out to support the homeless, excuse me, unhoused. You know, when you've been saying almost for 70 years saying homeless, it, it, it takes some time. So, uh, so bear with me uh, for not getting that right all the time. If, if you know of someone, please help them. If you see someone who's homeless, just don't think they're crazy. They, even though they might be half of us crazy. So, well, you know, what's the difference? So when you see them, if you don't do nothing but do this or smile. I have been working with, well, actually once, but I will continue to work with a group called Street Samaritans. And they put the humanity back in working with the unhoused population because there's a lot of people working who are unhoused. I did not know that. Who go to work and come home and sleep in a car or sleep on somebody's couch or sleep out in the street. Be mindful how you speak to people. Be mindful of how you how your train of thought is. We have been conditioned to think that people who live in an, in an environment, in an untraditional environment, something's wrong with them. They did something wrong. They're all drug addicts. That is not true. This is the furthest thing from the truth. See, the media will show you that because they have programmed you to think a certain way. And that is the reason why you think the way you think. That's why I tell people to turn off the TV and tune in to WME that is listening. In your listening, when you get quiet, you will hear a whole new world. I cannot tell you what I'm trying to tell you anyway, is that the things that you hear are from the ancestors. Big mama, big daddy, auntie who, your cousins, all those who came here before you, who made your way possible, they are listening. They are waiting. I talk to my mama, Katie, and Edna, all the pitchforks. I talk to them all, all the time as they are guarding me because I know I've been in some, some situations. I should not be here on this platform. I should be six feet under. But, but because I know I have work to do and 
that work consists of sharing the knowledge that I have become, have been allowed to become privy to that I share because I got a big mouth. And if, if it's the truth and I deem it to be the truth, I'm going to tell it. I even put it in a book form. It's called The Passion Principles. My first book, uh, The Passion Principles, Pathways to Purpose, Power and Profit. I know that's a lot of literature. But in that book, I included information that I didn't know at the time in 1997. I, I self-published because nobody wanted to, to uh, publish my book. And the thought came to me, see, listen to the ancestors. Publish that book on your own. Self-publishing wasn't wasn't out then. It, I mean, it was, but it was so it was so minute. Now everybody self-publishes, but it was in that listening where I got still. While I was doing the breathing that I shared with you this morning, that's why I say keep pen and paper. We say no, Zelda. We text everything. No, honey, you need to write because there is synchronicity, a synopsis between your brain, pen and paper that does not exists with electronic equipment. This is 5G, it's killing you. You don't know it, we, it's killing all of us. But over a period of time, it, it does detriment. So, cause I know I used to have a bad habit of putting my phone in my bra, uh-uh, don't do that. You wind up with something you don't want. So uh, keep it away from your body as long as you possibly can. But keep in mind that this the art of listening begins with you so find yourself something that brings you comfort and get in a small or large room doesn't matter as long as it's quiet and begin the process of listening and speaking out loud because words have wings and the words that you say i am like in our monday morning mindfulness a meditation, I'll say, I am happy. I am healthy. Two of the most powerful words on the planet. I and am. Whatever you put between I and am, that is what you will experience during the course of the day, during the course of your life. So it is imperative that you take the time to listen to the ancestors. I hear my Aunt Edna. I hear my Aunt Julie. I hear Aunt Gra uh, my grandma. I hear everybody in my head. And you think you're crazy? Who, Lord have mercy. You're not crazy. You are entering into a space of consciousness that is not taught in public school because in public school, you are taught to what? Read, write, and arithmetic, right? I haven't used algebra or uh, trigonometry, trigonometry yet. You, so you think about all the things that you've learned in school and how they are or are not servicing you at this point in your life. That is something that you want to be aware of. And I want you to always be aware that whatever you are feeling, trust your gut. Your gut is your intuition. We think this is the brain. Yeah, it is the brain, but the gut is the second brain. And it will never, ever steer you wrong. When you are in the midst of chaos and confusion, as we are right now, that is the time to, to go within. And I want to share with you, and I will post this on um, my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, as well as the Higher Learning TV show uh, blog, Tumblr, on Tumblr. Information that you need. Baba Kwame Sunhorse just sent me, and, he, uh, and I watched this too, High on the Hog, how African-American uh, cuisine has transformed America. I had no idea. And I sent this to Loren, too. Uh, it's a movie on black shelves. It is off the chain. But let me uh, um, warn you, there is something going on. Uh, there's an outbreak alert. I didn't mean to attach this to food, but if we're talking about food. There's an outbreak alert. Violent stomach bug spreads across the northeast causing chaos and confusion. And I will, I will put that on my blog as well. Uh, Baba Kwame Sunhorse uh, sent me this information. She's always sending me something. And I am very grateful to have had the opportunity to be uh, privy to this information. So thank you, Baba Kwame Sunhorse. And if you have information that you would like to share, we would like to uh, hear it 
as well. You can you can always reach me at higherlearningnetwork.org. You scroll to the bottom, there's a contact information there, and it's in there. And speaking of outbreak, there's an outbreak in your food, and it's going to continue to be an outbreak in your food unless you grow your own. Zelda, I can't grow my own. I live in an apartment. I live in an apartment, so what's your excuse? If you're not growing your own food, do you really know what you're eating? As you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there are my seedlings. And they're getting light. And they're growing. And this is my tower garden. And as you can see, the water is coming down right in there. And as soon as the other seedlings grow, they'll be able to get daily water too. So no, I don't have to be concerned with an outdoor garden because I have an indoor garden. And the seedlings are growing. And this is the light because there's no sun outside today. <laughs>
Aguaba in Nigeria, Peleo in South Africa, Saobona in Senegal, Nangadef in Kenya, Jambo in Israel, Shalom in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Palestine, and Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings and may peace be upon you all. Join us live on the on air radio network called 727 731 5192. We want to talk to you. Grand Rising, and thank you so much for joining. Grand Rising, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks. The stressologist. Any stress in your life? Well, most of us do. Unfortunately, we don't know what to do with it. Stress, especially as it relates to worry. I was once a worry ward, worried about everything, and I finally figured it out. What's some training? Yeah, I've been certified with the American Society of Training and Development, National Speakers Association, and a host of others. But none of those organizations helped me stop worrying. They just gave me validation for the public to see what credentials I have. So the credentials I, I have now are from life experience and I've learned how not to worry. And you can learn how not to worry too. Because it is indoctrinated in us to worry. We don't have the answers, so we think the worst is gonna happen. Well, I got a solution to that. And that, pro and that is the Worry Workshop. So I want to pull that up for, whoops, pull that up for you on my blog. Why do you worry when you don't have to? Go to my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, and you can sign up right there and find out how you. And remember, sharing is caring. If you care about yourself and, and your loved ones, help them see their way out of a mess. Give them the gift it makes a great birthday gift. It makes a great holiday gift. So instead of running to the store, getting something that they really might not need, give them a worry-free life. Give them the gift. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing.